Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Old Country, and uh, I didn't really expect this to happen at 6 a.m. Good thing uh, I was here for it. I was I was doing something else, and I just I quickly refreshed it. I'm like, all right, let's uh, let's take a look to see if it came. And I'm like, oh, it's I'm a little late because here it is, update 1.13 coming April 4th. Happened uh, 14 minutes ago, so I'm like, okay, let's do the video. I you know I was expecting it to be at 5 a.m., but then it's like, eh, you know, 6 a.m. works. So. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. I have no idea what's going on, so... Spring box. Okay. Spring has sprung. Uh, hey, oh, Zookeeper Spring has sprung, and with it comes a new Planet Zoo update. Free update 1.13. Will be making its way to you on April 4th. Take a look below for more info on what you can expect to see. Ooh, this is... <gasps> yes, dude. I, I gotta be quiet. It is. It is a. Uh, it is morning, so I gotta be quiet. But yes, null paths. Finally, yes. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. It's just about time. So, uh, an but animal sociality. This is interesting. Okay, let's find out. A new animal interaction mechanic is. Ooh, a new animal interaction mechanic is making its way to Planet Zoo, introducing animal sociality. This feature aims to bring a more lifelike approach to the introduction of new animals into your existing habitats and per, and to provide clarity when the, when and why overcrowding issues happen. Okay. This will not change how you manage your animals, but is instead an overhaul in how we communicate this to you and how the animals engage within their group relationships. All right, this is sounding a little bit more like a franchise thing, but this could it could get a little deeper. Um, all animals will now have an additional definition in their Zoopedia entry. Solitary, um, I'm gonna butcher this, matri- matri- matrial- I'm gonna but butcher that, dude. <laughs> matrial Neil. That's a- that's as- that's as good as you're gonna get for me. Patri- Patrial Neil. I have no idea what these words mean. Honestly, I'm gonna have to look them up. I've never heard them in my life. But, uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, how- how embarrassing. How embarrassing. Uh, this will let you know how they engage with their offspring. Oh, so our animal- so... Parents are going to engage with their offspring more. So is this going to introduce new? I'm I'm confused. Is this going to introduce new like animations and stuff with all animals? New animals that are introduced to a habitat and juveniles that mature will be marked as outsiders if they exceed the gender or population limits of it. This might render a whole video for me. Like it's this is a complex thing they're overhauling right here. They're they're literally overhauling how animals work like literally overhauling how animals work and i don't know if i can cover it properly until i really i mean they're going to tell me obviously how it's working here i don't know if we can properly kind of get a grasp on this until we actually get our hands on the update itself but i'll, I'll keep reading i'll keep reading uh, I'll pick up from will be marked as outsiders if they exceed the gender or population limits of a habitat if they are rejected due to their relationship with the group alpha i.e. male and uh, I'm, I'm, come on man matrianeal I'm just matrial lil, dude this is like the hardest word to say matrialineal <laughs> I can't say that word. People are going to be roasting me in the comments. Or if their parents are present when they're a, sol a solitary species. Interesting. I, b I wonder how this will affect, like, in-game animations and stuff. Like, will we be able to tell when this is happening in, like, Sandbox? Or is this kind of like a just a franchise thing? This will maintain a more stable existing population and... Re Excuse me, and will reduce infighting amongst existing animals. Interesting. Okay, uh, this is this is deep. This is actually really deep. Uh, a really deep overhaul for franchise players. In instead, having them grouped together to target the new outlier, continue to fight until they are removed, or the situation causing them to be deemed an outsider is improved. Outsiders will also be rejected and unable to partake in group dynamics such as mating, social interaction, and playing, thus creating a more realistic experience, helping stop. For helping stop further overpopulation issues. So if you forgot to pause and go grab a snack, you won't come back to a 30 to 30 plus unintentional new offspring. Oh, this is a fix to that. Um like I said, I'm, we're gonna have to see how this plays out. Cause I know people this this might affect how people like really how people breed their animals. 
But like they said, this is a very, very realistic approach. So I think the like people like myself who love the realism aspect of the game might want to even go in and start trying franchise because of this new approach to how animals work. So th this is something I will be covering on the channel, like I said, a little bit more in depth because this is actually really, really interesting. I'm not even gonna lie, but it's just like, I gotta see how it works and functions within like the actual gameplay of the game. Uh, however, some groups where coexisting wouldn't have been possible without aggression, such as habitats with an unbalanced gender ratio, may now be able to be formed if the members have developed a bond prior to maturing. Interesting, interesting. Uh, sociality will show you which animals have been have become bonded. Bonded animals will never fight their alpha. This is cool. This is actually really cool. Uh, bonded animals will never fight their alpha or their bonded partners. Yeah, this is really in depth stuff. Like this is this is kind of big, and can become bonded through spending time together or by being juveniles born. I wonder in game if you'll see those bonded pairs like actually just stay together the whole time. Or if it's gonna be more of like a, uh, more of like a statistic, like a statistical kind of feature. I think from what it's showing, it's kind of they're sticking together more, which is I th I think I'm just hear me out. Maybe this is kind of our solution to bigger herding, because herding has been in the game. It's been fixed before, but it still kind of doesn't work a little bit uh, there there are some problems with how herding i'm not i'm still to this day not sure exactly how herds work but this if if this new animal sociality feature can can come like have these bonded animals then can a whole group of animals like a herd of wildebeest become bonded to each other and can this work with animals like wildebeest coexisting with plain zebra i'm not sure uh, I'm, I, this is this is something like I said we're gonna have to literally go into the game and just start testing a bunch of stuff out to see how really in depth this feature is. Um, uh, ch 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 bonded animals will never fight their alpha or their bonded partners and can become bonded through spending time together or by being juveniles born from the same two parents. That is actually a big feature. That's a big feature because that's a, that's basically just a real life zoo thing, and that's how that's how clouded leopards breed. You know, they you have to put them together at a very very young age. Uh, it is unlikely that all animals in a large group will be bonded. Oh, okay, okay. It is unlikely that all of them will be bonded. So this is um kind of. I, I wouldn't say it's going against my herding theory, but I think it still is. Possible. It says unlikely, not impossible. Uh, for example, it can allow for more than one male to remain in a matriant, matrial, matrial anneal, matrial, matrial, matrial matrial anneal society. I think I got it. Matrial, matrial anneal society. I did. That probably sounded dumb. Uh, I.e., the alpha's lion's brother being able to remain within the pride. Furthermore, in some species, the alpha male or female tends to lead the group, but doesn't claim exclusive mating rights. This is just crazy in depth. This is crazy deep. It's, it's, we're going further and further down the rabbit hole here. Uh, these leaders will be marked with a crown in the info panel. Does it show that? Um, I don't see, uh, I don't see it. Uh, so we don't know what the crown looks like yet. Uh, will be marked the crown in the info panel, replacing the alpha symbol so that whatever they claim they have, it is clear who they are with, uh, who are they are within the group. So the players can be aware of their reproductive role. This is, yeah, this is really a big breeding overhaul. This is pretty intense. This is like a really deep change. The outsider relationships can be lost once an animal is removed from the habitat and time has passed allowing the relationships to decay. After this, an animal can be reintroduced to a group as if they have never met before, but unless the habitat has changed, i.e. the gender ratio is now balanced, the animal may still be rejected and become an outsider once more. However, if all conditions that are causing an animal to be deemed an outsider become invalid, it will enter an interrogation period after which it will be fully integrated and accepted by the existing group. This is just literally how animals work in real life, and the fact that they're adding this to the game is just is mind-blowing how how crazy this actually is i feel like a lot of people are going to overlook this 
But this is like a really, really realistic feature. Like very, very realistic feature. And I, I think it's going to get overlooked, sadly, but uh, hopefully not. Like I, like I said, video video later on explaining this whole thing once I figure out how everything, you know, works within a gameplay standpoint. Uh, this can happen if the gender and population limits are balanced again, or if the animal is no longer impacted by the alpha of the group. Interesting. Uh, the type of outsider an animal is will be displayed within the info panel, so you will know the cause and be able to take appro appropriate uh, managerial steps from there. This, pl this panel will also display the time left in the integration period should your animal enter one. Animal sociality will add all of this information under the social tab. All sociality dynamics will also be labeled appropriate per species, whether that be a pride, pack, herd, clan, hyenas, or similar. Wow. That, wow. Okay. I, wow. Yeah, it's, this, this feature is big. This is big, and like I said, it war it's going to warrant its own video. Uh, I don't want to spend too much more time talking about it. Uh, obviously, you can read it here. I do want to get to the other stuff. We are at 11 minutes. I do want to get this video out to have people actually, like, you know, talk about it and have discussions about it. But, like, yeah, this is... We'll talk about this more later. Um, this this is going to be a little bit easier to digest here. Uh, Null Pass. Okay, we all know what this is. It's something everyone's been wanting. This is great. This is the feature people are going to be talking about. Ever wanted to have a hidden or completely natural path? Yes. Or to style your own via decorative items? Yes. We know you have. Yes. <laughs> and now you can! Introducing Null Paths. Disabling the curbs on pa ground path toggle on any natural path and I'll create a Null Path. Woo! An invisible path that allows guests or zoo staff to walk across a seemingly unmarked terrain. Dude, hovering. You're going to make these invisible bridges and guests are just going to walk across them. <laughs> they're just gonna walk across they're, he, they're walking on thin air uh, <laughs> how do they do that uh, these paths will function the same <laughs> as any other path meaning that terrain cannot be deformed around them <laughs> yes oh my gosh this is just I just I, sorry I'm, I'm geeking out over this uh, nor can facilities yeah, they just work like other paths but they're invisible it's, it's literally what we've been wanting and they said we know you have but they will only show an outline when selected for building purposes and can be customized beyond that to your heart's content. Similar to null barriers, any build mode will now have a setting drop down to highlight hidden paths. Oh, that's cool. This is enabled by default, but can be toggled as necessary for those who really go in depth with their building. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the, um, that's going to be the, the feature, you know, of, of people are going to be talking about. Like I said, this is like, I think this is actually might be the biggest feature of the of the update, but this is going to be the one that people talk about because, you know, people in sandbox builders like myself, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is I mean, it's an instant. It's going to be instantly usable. Uh, just instantly you just could go in and you're like I'm gonna change all my paths <laughs> to be null paths now. So uh, and just create your own paths. I like that. But yeah, awesome. Thank you Frontier. Just a great j I couldn't have asked for anything more. You know, this is a feature we've all been wanting and it's great to see it. So, uh, multi-axis advanced movement. Say what now? Another improvement coming for all of our builders in addition to your advanced movement options. Multi-axis movement. Until now, when moving objects, you have had to pan it across each axis individually to reach the exact placement you want. Now, when you are in a building mode, an additional handle has been added between each of the axis arrows. These handles can be selected to move any asset freely across two axes at once. Whilst i.e. forward, back, left, and right. Whilst remaining locked in position up and down, this should make building easier than ever. That's, okay, that is another big thing that might fly over people's heads. Um, a little bit hard to explain without without going in, without talking about it right now. Uh, with, with, well, just by talking to it right now. Uh, but it's, like I said, once I get into the game, just like this animal sociality thing, once you get into the game, it's going to be a lot easier to explain but um this is big this is big and it, it like they said it's basically 
it, it just adds more freedom to moving things when you build and it makes things easier to build and faster to build. And I'm a slow builder. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know that about me. I'm a slow builder. This might, this might speed things up. This might be a little bit easier. Uh, once again, well, j to get the full effect of this, uh, this update, uh, we're really just have to get into it. I mean, null pass is self-explanatory, but these two features are like, it's, it's going to be better self-explained when you get into it. And like, I show you like how things are going on. So that'd be really cool when this comes out, um, April 4th, April 4th. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, and then last but not least, climbable asset toggle. Ever created a build that you're really happy with, but then you unpause and, oh no, some of your assets are climbable. Uh, yep. 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 I remember. Okay. Uh, yep. A few months ago, I had a real problem with this. I loaded into a file. I created a, it wasn't even just that. I loaded into a file. I created a blueprint or not, sorry, a, uh, a Steam Workshop link to a new file to send it over to someone else. And when I got it back, all of the climbing was different. Everything was different and it all changed from how I set it up. And I'm like, I got to redo it. Not anymore. Apparently not anymore. This is no longer an issue with the introduction of climbable asset toggle. Any object that is climbable can now have its climbing function toggled on and off. This selection is also available for groups and multi-selections, allowing you to toggle large amounts of assets at once. This is So basically, if I'm reading this right, you can toggle whether you want an animal to climb something or not, which is huge, which is huge. This is huge. This might be... This might be one of the biggest features in the in this whole update because this is gonna, for climbing animals. This is going to really give them if you if you don't want, if you want them to climb something in particular, but you have also things like trees in the environment that you don't want them to climb. You can toggle them on and off. From, from what I'm reading, you can toggle them on and off, so you can toggle off a tree so that they're basically exclusively only able to climb the set climbing structures you have built in the enclosure which is just this is a dream come true it, it really is a dream come true uh this is a really hefty update and i'm i'm very i'm very shocked and very excited for this but like i said this whole update unlike any other update i think we've ever received it, it's going to be very very much better represented uh better explained when we get into the game so i am very very excited for april 4th to come around now because this is this is exciting this is very exciting uh let's finish this off uh this will allow you to customize what animals are able to climb on yep therefore restricting what they can scale and stopping them from being able to escape from undesired areas oh this is a sandbox player's dream <laughs> this is a sandbox player's dream all three of these are ex just a sandbox player's dream it is going to make it's good. It's changing the game. This is going to drastically change the game and drastically change how we build. It's this is exciting. This is truly exciting. Uh, when looking at the animal's traversable area, disabled climbing assets will be highlighted in black areas. Enabled climbing assets will be highlighted in green. This will be particularly useful for things like custom barriers or for creating more compre uh, comprehensive climbing frames in which sections of it are maintained as purely decorative without disrupting the rest of the frame. It Beautiful. Beautiful. As always, these exciting new features will come alongside a range of fixes and quality of life improvements, which you can read about in the patch notes after release. And make sure you catch the special live stream later today. Uh, it's at noon, I believe, my time. And yes, this is... This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, just, okay, Darth Cole, he lives in Texas, so this is something we can relate to. Just realize this is arriving April 4th. Lots of new things happening that week of my life. Same here. Uh, Super uh, Mario movie's coming out April 5th. Really looking forward to the Mario Bros movie. It's Houston Zoo's open up the Galapagos April 7th. Oh, he talked about the Mario Bros movie. <laughs> A new update. Uh, one of the uh, last of the Mandalorian episodes that I'm watching right now. Uh, this is, yeah, this is awesome. This is just, yeah, I, I feel you, man. Darth, I feel you on this one. <laughs> this is crazy. Only, and yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, we figured that. This is just, this is, this is a really good update. 
this is a really 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 good update it's one of the best updates we've had in a long while null paths toggle and climbing assets multi-access movement for faster and smoother building and also a complete rework on how animals work in game to make them as literally as realistic as possible frontier you've outdone yourself on this one i i really i i gotta i gotta hand it to you on this one you've really outdone yourselves in this one i am super excited for april 4th i am super excited for the stream later today let me know what y'all think do you like this update is it going do you think it's going to be good i think it's going to be amazing let me know what y'all think in the comments below and i'll see you in the stream later today peace out y'all